Welcome to the Supercapacitor Technology Event offered by Richardson RFPD today. I'm Michael McGeechee, the Field Application Engineer with Cornell Dubler Electronics. Today I'm going to talk about using supercapacitors as part of an integrated power backup solution. Batteries have been used for backup devices for a long time. They can primarily be considered to be a voltage-based power solution. In other words, their voltage will remain stable during discharge over a fairly wide range of load currents, and it only begins to drop sharply at the end of the battery's charge life. On the other hand, supercapacitors store energy as in an electronic, in electrostatic form. The voltage drops as the current flows and is essentially linear. Therefore, it really can be classified as a current-based power source. Electric generators can actually be used to replace the, the power grid uh, operating in place of the power company. They're typically used where you're going to have to supply power for a long period of time uh, at relatively high levels. And they will run as long as you have a source for turning the generator. They can be run with natural gas or gasoline or other sources. Batteries typically store more energy per unit volume and per unit weight than capacitors, but generally not able to deliver the same amount of power per unit volume or per unit weight. For many small devices, a battery is the primary source of power. But supercapacitors may be added to act as short-term holdup during battery changes. Their advantages over small batteries is they usually have a life that is as long or longer than the device they're installed in and therefore do not need to be made field replaceable. In other applications, the power source is actually part of a larger assembly, such as an automobile. And the device actually draws its power from this primary source. And then you guys put a small amount of supercapacitor in there to act as a, a short-term backup and supply internal power management. Some battery charging systems. Where solar power is a primary source of power to the system, supercapacitors have several uses. They can be used both in the control systems, but also in the power management system. In this marketplace, most electric vehicles actually in use today are relatively low-speed inner-city vehicles. And therefore, the power demands needed are relatively small, perhaps 15 to 30 kilowatts. One of the most difficult tasks in an off-grid residential system that rely on solar power and battery for backup of electricity is how to deal with high starting current demand loads such as air conditioning and refrigeration compressors. These types of starts can put so much demand onto the house's power grid that you actually see a voltage strip. One solution to this problem is to put a supercapacitor bank co-located with this high demand load and it provides those first few milliseconds of current flow for that device. Using this supercapacitor in this way to handle short high peak demand currents can allow you to use a smaller main battery bank. For factories that have done a great deal of industrial automation, there are many pieces of equipment that should have a control shutdown. If you simply power off the machine, either by turning it off or by turning power off to the factory. They will require recalibration when you restart them. Power needs to be supplied long enough, which could be from a couple of seconds to half a minute, for these parts to be returned to their home position for all the robots and all of their data to be backed up. It's best to power, power, supply this power individually at each piece of equipment, either by battery or for some of the higher current short duration demands, a supercapacitor bank 
so that these parts can be individually protected from a power loss to some or all of the factory. The information system for the factory uh, will take the individual equipment data and back that up as part of the power management system for the entire factory. And it's typically backed up either by batteries or perhaps by a generation generator system. Providing an integrated power management system like this for your automated factories will allow for quicker recovery from a major power loss, allowing you to get back into assembly much faster than is traditional. There are numerous small portable devices, such as point of sale tablets and other kinds of handheld scanners. Rather than require the entire device to be plugged in for the battery to be recharged at the end of each battery charge life, some of these use replaceable batteries and separate charging systems for those batteries. In actual use, there needs to be some backup system within the device that holds its data storage while you swap batteries. This could be performed by either a small coin cell battery or by supercapacitors. The biggest advantage to supercapacitors in this application is they typically have a life that is at least as long as the device, and therefore you don't have to add the field replaceable system that you need with most battery systems. And of course, the most critical of all backup systems, the backup systems for large server farms. Some of these control the total data for an entire corporation. And of course, on others, we have stored our entire lives in existence. If you look at the picture here, you will see a room where there is a tremendous amount of heat being generated in racks and racks of electronic. Yet the room looks cold. It's because it is. These rooms will typically be conditioned to well below 20 degrees C in order to keep this equipment cool as possible because of the heat generated inside the equipment. For most of these systems, the primary initial power is supplied by a big battery bank. This will then be backed up by a generator system of some kind. The generator will typically take from 15 seconds to a minute to completely spin up and to begin providing power on a power loss. Depending on the time it takes for the generator to spin up and the total current demand, it is possible that a supercapacitor bank could provide a more efficient battery backup than a battery bank. This is particularly true if the backup system is also used as part of the powering power conditioning system for the server farm. The power cycling of the bank as it performs the function of power conditioning will reduce the life of the battery bank more significantly than it would reduce the life of a capacitor bank. If instead of relying on a generator system to keep the system running for prolonged periods of time, the intention is to provide backup in order to bring the system down to a quiescent low power state, supercapacitors can provide a significant advantage in the front end of the power management system. By using supercapacitors in the early stages, the first few seconds of this shutdown, you can reduce the total size of the battery bank that is needed to complete the process while allowing a more controlled shutdown of the non-critical parts of the system. Of course, these capacitors are sold under numerous names, supercapacitors, ultracapacitors, EDLCs, but they're all EDLCs. They're all electric double layer capacitors. They store energy as an electrostatic charge, so there is no chemical reaction as you have with batteries. They have a much lower incidence of thermal runaway and fires associated with them than the diversus batteries. They have a low sensitivity to the number of charge discharge cycles or even to the total discharge current that you can draw versus battery design. They are available in a wide temperature range, as wide as minus 40 to plus 85 degrees C. They have a power efficiency greater than 95%.